Angelique Clark says she wanted to form the group, but her school says abortion is too controversial. The very same school has a Bible group and a gay-straight alliance. The teen has teamed up with a religious legal group, and now they are filing suit. Angelique and her attorney, Jocelyn Floyd, go on the record. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having Angelique, us. Angelique, first to you. Um, tell me, what did the school say to you when you said you wanted to start this pro-life group? Well, um, after I submitted the application, I actually didn't hear back from them for many months. So I contacted my vice principal, and he sat me down and told me that the club would be too controversial, that pro-choice people would feel left out, and that there were more qualified people than a sophomore to talk about abortion. Did uh, do you go to a private school or a public school? I go to a public school. And did the did the teacher say, suppose that there had been a, uh, a, a club with the opposite viewpoint, a choice club, would that have been permitted, do you know? Yes, based on the Equal Access Act, you can have uh, any club as long as there's another club that follows the guidelines. Jocelyn, uh, you have uh, filed for a motion for preliminary injunction. What are you seeking and on what grounds? Well, what we've asked the court to do is require the, club, the school to approve the club uh, both long term and right away. So the preliminary injunction says that since she's being deprived of free speech rights, this is an irreparable harm. You can't fix it with money. You can't fix it with anything else. The only thing that fixes it is to approve her club and let the club exist. And the grounds that we base this on is both the First Amendment, students have the right to speak just as much as adults do, and the Federal Access Act, which was specifically enacted by Congress in 1984 to protect students' clubs when they had controversial or unpopular ideas to still be able to have clubs on campus. Angelique, um, I've got a copy of your application. I've actually it's read it uh, applying for the club. Um, are, are there other students that support you? Do you have any idea whether you'd get, you know, whether you'd get students to join your club? Yes, I have 25 interested students already signed up for the club, which is uh, actually 10 more than necessary. Has the, has the school indicated like that maybe they they thought they made the wrong decision and we might want to back out of and, and give you permission to start this club? Have they said anything in response to, for instance, the lawsuit? No, I haven't heard anything back from the administration as yet. How about uh, the teachers? Any of the teachers, have they said anything? No, they haven't. Um, let me go back to you, um, Jocelyn. Um, have you had any contact with the teachers directly or with the administration? No. Back in May, we sent uh, what's known as a demand letter, which is a precursor to the lawsuit, where we said, hey, school, this is what the law says. This is what you did wrong. Approve her club. And we heard absolutely nothing from them. And this is a strategy that we use across the country with all of our Students for Life of America clubs. And it's successful and has been successful every time we've done it until this school. So uh, their silence is what led to the lawsuit. And at this point, I'm sure we'll hear something from their lawyers, but we haven't heard anything yet. Well, Angelique, uh, we'll be watching this, and uh, Jocelyn as well. We'll see what happens with this uh, lawsuit. Whether or not uh, they allow you to have this, uh, um, whether they allow the, you to have this club at your school. Thank you, Angelique, and Jocelyn as well. Thank you. Thank you. And look out now.